Hello and welcome back ladies and gentlemen hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet because a subscription is very very helpful from you it may look like a simple thing but it means a lot so please subscribe you lose nothing okay so let's continue so we are still back at the login I'm not satisfied with this because if let's say I type the wrong password and I hate these suggestions. So if you want to get rid of these suggestions because they hide too much, I want to say uh, auto complete, put that at off. Always remember to remove that. I don't know why it adds that. Yeah, now it doesn't do auto complete anymore, which is good at email.com. So if I click login, it tells me wrong password, but the email has disappeared. So let's fix that real quick. We can fix that just like we did on the sign up by putting value and a value there. So just like here, I'll put value and put email here, set value. And then same thing, I set value for password here. And okay, that one is already set to go. So if I refresh, I get back my email. But the password, if I type a wrong one, I still get wrong password, which is nice. Mm -hmm. So everything cool so far. And let's put the right password here. There we go, logged in. However, I had mentioned that it's a good idea to hash our passwords here. So instead of just doing uh, this, let's go back to our sign up and right about here, right when we're about to insert things, we need to change the password. And there's a function called password hash. So password hash works like this. There's a string that you add, which is supposedly or preferably your password, which in this case is in the post variable password and then password default is the default hashing algorithm but you can change it to another one if you want but I'll just use the default and leave it at that and we need to send this to password itself like this so post password is equal to password hash and then it will do the hashing for us very good. Okay. So let's test this uh, one more time. Uh, I will go to operations and I want to truncate this table. I don't want no data in here anymore. So removed. Yes. Let's go to sign up one more time and I will sign up and put the usual details. Password and go to the next password and then let's sign up. So now we are at email here, login I mean. If I go to browse, you will notice that now the password isn't the word password, but a hash of the same. So this means if I try to log in, it will fail because those two do not match. So we can test that, email at email.com. Then put a password there and try to log in. And it tell me wrong password, even though it's correct. So we need to go to the login.php and fix that. So in here, before we try to do this, we need to compare this password that the user, oh, the password that, because the thing is this, this, this encryption is one way. So what this means is that this value that we encrypted here cannot be decrypted. It just, um, once you, change it to this that word password that we added there is completely lost so so how then do we know that somebody has typed in their correct password well what we do is we also hash the password that they've given us while logging in and then compare the two hashes because if you hash the same value it will always return the same hash so if there's password and then you hash it, it will give you the same exact string. So what we do is whatever the user gives us, we hash it as well and then compare the hashes instead. 
So this is hashed because it's coming from the database, but this one isn't because it's coming from the user. So let's hash this one and then compare the two. Now the problem with doing that is that password hash works a little bit different than the other uh, hashing algorithms that we do because it adds a sort. So what is a sort anyway? So when hashing a password uh, or some text, now if you're unfamiliar with hashing, the way hashing works is that let's say you have a word like there. So to hash this is to encrypt it uh, in such a way that it's unrecognizable. So normally these uh, encrypting algorithms will just replace the word maybe T or H or E with some other letters like maybe A, G, I like this. So this one is an encrypted version of this. So you just need to know the formula for returning this back to this and then you can read the text. Now, the way these one-way hashes work is they do all kinds of mathematics that make it nearly impossible to return back to the original text. So, for example, they'll get B, or they'll get T and convert it to a number, they'll get H, convert to a number, and E, convert to a number from 1 to 26, since there are 26 letters, and then multiply, divide, uh, module, use a modulus on that, and then count the numbers, add them together, you know, they do thousands of math tricks there and then they come out with a hash of some kind which is gibberish it could be even long like this even though your original text was just three letters like that so from all this you can see that it becomes nearly impossible to return back to this now what password hash does is even worse than this because it adds a sort at the end here so to add something an extra piece of text that you don't know about so it could be extra okay it could be the time of the day maybe it's the time maybe it could be the date or maybe it could be the number of seconds since 1970 who knows so this thing just adds extra text to the end of your text and then hashes it so even though you knew that the text is there it becomes even more difficult to return back even though you knew the password because it's it added some extra text there for extra protection. So meaning that if I hash the new password uh, again, I will not know what the hash was, what the sort was originally. So it will look different. This means instead of trying to hash my password again, I will use a formula, a function called function, uh, password verify which was created specific for this purpose so here it tells me that i should put the password here and push there put the hash there so the hash is this version of the password that is already hashed so i'll put this one here like so then the password is the one that the user has given us so i'll put this one there and then this returns true or false to confirm whether this is valid or not so let's just put it here conveniently because that's what we are looking for, true or false. So we just say password verify and then so it itself adds the sort to the end of the of the password here. It knows what sort it is based on this original password that is already hashed. So part of that hash is the sort. So to add it here. Okay, so this should uh, do the trick so back here and click there we go signed up so now since we have logged in we need to show instead of just saying hi user i want to be able to see my name over there so now remember that um, we did store our name in the session when we authenticate a user so um yes so what I want to do is create a function that gets names from here. So for example, I can say function, uh, uh, I'll create a function called auth like this, which is responsible for getting stuff from here. And then I will do this. I will say uh, here, it will give me the column that you want. And then here I'll just return uh, the column that you want. So 
So in this case, it's session user, not this that I've pasted here. So say return session user and then whatever column that is. But that column should exist, otherwise we risk uh, showing an error. So we'll copy this and we'll say if is set, or we'll say if not empty, because not empty also checks if a value is set. So if not empty, then return that. Otherwise, let's return an empty string. Okay, so auth column there, nice. So all I need to do now is go to, let's say, the nav. So um, right about here, where it says hi user, I can echo out the auth function and then uh, the column name here. So what column do I want? I want the username column like so huh. so in this case um, in case it's not found instead of returning an empty string let's put unknown like this so refresh and hi unknown so it couldn't find me hmm wait there's no username column is there? username it's right there hmm. okay so I know exactly what happened here in the login page when we oh in the authenticate where is that authenticate we're authenticating this row but in the login remember that the actual row is in a zero like this so I have to put this here instead of just row the first item in the row so my bad let me go back let's try this again let's log in and put email at email.com and the password is password okay finally we got a name there very cool if i now click log out and go back to the home page it will not know me uh, home so hi unknown yes very very cool now we just need to be able to restrict users once they um, uh, when they to restrict users to instead of seeing this they should just go to the login page if things are not good like this so what we'll do is we'll go to the functions page and create uh, ask the question is this user logged in or not and uh, yes this should work just fine now before we continue we'll have to convert everything to OOP that way because the thing is getting big if you notice here I'm making so many functions here now imagine where the project ends this functions.php page will be massive and it's going to create it's going to have separate functions here that some of these work together could be grouped together to do one job okay and then uh, another problem is if I have an error somewhere it becomes very difficult because this functions page will go up to maybe 5,000 or 10,000 lines because of this and as a result, it becomes very difficult to find specifically what I'm looking for. And also, if I want to reuse this code in another project, it becomes a hassle because now I have to find which functions are related to each other, copy them and paste there. Whereas, if all of this was in one class, I'll just copy the actual file class. And because it's always portable, it will work just by transporting it to another project. So what I'm saying is this is not a very smart way of doing things. So we have to do it the smart way. So I'm going to convert uh, the thing to OOP in the next video. That way we can work the smart way. Okay.